Except two that we're doing today, God has given me. I wrote them. God wrote them. He used my hand. And He made me write this one about myself. It's called Grace and Mercy. I am, as many of you have heard in the past, a very selfish, suspicious person by nature. So to give and to be giving is difficult. It's easier now because I married a giver. And she has taught me through God's grace how to be a giver. But as you, but as you read the words of this song, realize that this is who I was. I needed and still need God's grace and his mercy. To get me through my selfishness. Does that make sense? Yes. So as you read the words and I sing it, know that it's it's more than just another song. It's about the guy that lives. Right. And I, sometimes I can't get through it. Outside my window stood an old man with marks across his face. I turned my head and closed the window. Why was he at my place? And he cried, I am hungry and cold. Can you reach out?
service with girls at the club that became a prostitution ring with adoring clients. They would provide just about anything you wanted or needed for the comfort and bed, for the sex. Cocaine fueled her sexual lifestyle until one day she had a brief moment of clarity. I found myself locked in a bathroom and um, was shooting myself up and I blacked out. And when I woke up, that needle was hanging out of my arm and blood was dripping down my arm. And I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, there's gotta be something out of this. In her 30s, she was able to get off drugs and left the sex industry. Sally married several more times with each marriage ending in disappointment. In 2011, her husband took his own life while on the phone with Sally sending her further into a spiral of pain and emptiness. I knew I was one drink away from going back to the hood to find crack. I knew I was, I was a drink away from putting a crack pipe in my mouth or, or a needle in my arm. I just, I felt defeated. Defeated, deflated. I was, I was done. I just wanted to die. That life just wasn't worth living because if life was nothing but pain, why do I want to go through more pain? You know, constant pain. Alcohol masked her pain until she met Roland, who was a Christian, and saw Sally's wounded heart. Roland told me once, he said, you know, underneath this tough exterior that you want people to see, this tough woman is really a broken person. And Excuse me. I just looked at him and I said, don't tell anybody. Because I didn't want, I didn't want people to know how vulnerable I really was. Sally agreed to go to church with Roland, though she was afraid she would be judged and rejected. But what happened next took her by surprise. The minute I walked to that door, I felt God. I felt him. I felt it in those handshakes, the 
the women would give you when you when you were bed. And that's when God spoke. Excuse me. He said, Sally, I know you hurt. People will fail you, but I never will. I have watched you all your life. He God spoke those words to me. And that was that defining moment or that aha moment that I knew everything was gonna be okay. And I was all in when he spoke to me, it's like he's real. Talk to me. He loves me. After decades of heartbreak and despair, Sally found the love she had always longed for when she gave her life to Jesus that day. It was better than any drug I could have ever taken in, in all my life, of drug addiction, alcoholism, and I didn't, I didn't crave any of it, I didn't want any of it, it was just overnight, it just gone, you know, and I was just so full and, and peaceful. I was at, I was at peace. And I no longer felt worthless. I felt love. I felt love. Sally and Roland soon married. They now minister together with their band, Bearing Armor, pointing others to the love of God as the only way to freedom and wholeness. That emptiness that I felt inside, those names that I called myself, um, were gone. Because now I'm, I'm the daughter of Christ. I'm a, I'm a daughter of the king. I have a, I have a heavenly father who loves me. And that's better than, than anything here on this earth. when I saw it, I was angry. I mean, I even looked at Roman and I said, Roman, they're calling me a whore. Roman, they're calling me a prostitute. Roman, they're calling me a man. That's not what my life was all about. But somebody needed to hear that six minutes. At the time, I didn't realize that I was angry. I said, see, I told you I should have never done that. I told you I, if I should have never done that. But I did. And God said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You let me be God. Someone needs to hear that story. But it's not just about that. It's about a relationship. All my life, I thought I was that person. All my life, I thought I was never going to amount to anything. All my life, these things were dug into me and dug into me. And don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I am not going to blame my life on anybody because I chose, I made those choices. I did those things. Nobody forced me. Of course, I didn't ask to be beat, but. There were times when I probably made him mad enough that boom, there you go, you know. But there ain't a thing I there ain't a thing I've done that anybody forced me to do. I did it myself. I have to take responsibility for my actions that I do. We all have to take responsibility for our actions. I'm not better than anybody. I, I'm a filthy rag, you know. I'm a sinner. I always will be. We're all sinners. We're all, we're all sinners in an imperfect world. But we serve a perfect God. And that's the difference. If he can take somebody like me, 
and cleaned me up and gave me the courage to do that and to share my testimony with this world. That was fun. Many years. And I, and I kind of feel, it, it kind of feels foreign to me right now because I haven't done this in, what, two years? And it was just a couple weeks ago. I was very discouraged. I still get discouraged. Even though I know I have a relationship with God, there's still some things I can't just give to God. I mean, we're, we're like that. We say we're going to give it to him. We go, okay, Lord, I can't handle this. You're going to have to do it for me. And then we walk away from it. But then we go right back and we pick that thing back up. Whatever it is, we go back and we pick it up because we think we can fix it. Or God's not doing it quick enough. I was very discouraged when I couldn't find work where I was turned down for two jobs. And I'm like, man. And it was from something I'd done in my past. Let's see, back up that was 24 years old. And then I had to remember, God's in control. He's going to find that job. He's going to put me right where he wants me to be. I just have to wait on it. I was the one dumb enough to quit my job, thinking that I was supposed to go here, thinking that that's where God was. But it really wasn't. I was trying to force his hand. But it wasn't it was where I wanted to be, but it wasn't where God was. I know there's people here that have same stories or similar stories that have lived their lives in pain, probably still do, but you don't have to. See, we serve a perfect God. Do you know who you are in Christ? Christ says, I'm a child of God. But as many as received him, he gave the right to become children of God. I'm a friend of Jesus. John 15, 15 says, No longer do I call you slaves, for they know not what the master is doing, but I have called you free. My old self was crucified with Christ, and I am no longer a slave to sin. Does this mean I'm perfect? No. I am not perfect. Does this mean I'm better than you? Absolutely not. I fail him daily. We all fail him daily. That's why we need him. I've been set free from, from, from death and sin, from the law of sin and death. In the Old Testament, you had to you had to take an offering. Sometimes people couldn't afford those offerings. But you had to take a burnt offering to the altar to atone for your sins. But when God sent his son, his son shed his blood for our sins. So we're no longer under the law. All we need to do is believe realize that God sent his son and he willingly died for us and was raised from the dead so that we can live with God. That's how much God loves us. My body's the temple of the Holy Spirit. He dwells in me. Isn't that wonderful? He said, the Holy Spirit dwells in me. That spirit will tell me what's right and what's wrong. And it's up to me to listen to it, whether I'm going to do the right thing or whether I'm going to do the wrong thing. We struggle with that daily. I'm a new creature in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old passed away and cold new things that come. I'm going to leave you with Psalms 139. It's my favorite psalm. 
Because in that scripture, in that piece of scripture, it brought to God knew us before we were ever born. He knew everything about us. He knew who we were going to be. He knew who our parents were going to be. He knew what we were going to be. He knew what we were going to do with our lives, good, bad, ugly, whatever. He knew everything about us before we were ever born. Yeah, he loves us now. So we're going, to we're going to share one more song with you, and then we're going to have an altar call. But I'm just going to ask you during this song, do you feel defeated? Do you feel deflated? Is there something you're hanging on to that you need to lay down at the cross, that you need to give to Jesus? Let's beg you that day. Don't carry that on your back anymore. Are you saved? Do you know if you're really saved? If you're not sure, come forward. We'd love to help you through it. Do you need church family? I can't think of a better family than right here. These people will love you to death. Do you need a recovery group? Are you struggling with addiction? Alcoholism? Are you struggling with bitterness? Are you just struggling? Are you just tired? Give to God. I was looking for a friend when I found you. How was I supposed to know that what you said was true? If I can't see it with my own eyes, well, it might be you have to lie. Trust me, you said. That's all I ask. And let me help you with that very pleasant task. So I said to myself, What can you do for me? Who do you think you are? What can be to trust in you? Who do you think you are? You see, who? You see.
Please. 